Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what I can see here so that I can try to track comments. Just a second and we will get started. There it is, there we go. Forums, you're not gonna have the microphone audio. I am wearing a microphone. Uh, hello to YouTube and um, Instagram and uh, Facebook. And you will get multiple camera angles and you will get good audio on the other platforms. Um, TikTok doesn't play well with Streamlabs you have to jump through some hoops and I just have not got those hoops figured out yet. So uh, what we have here again is a multi-axis mug and we're going to do a little bit of uh, turning. I've already carved the sides down here all nice and smooth, uh, sanded it to 120, but we're going to do some texturing and then we will hollow. So let me put my face shield on and we'll get started. I've got my tool rest set right next to the uh, handle here, which gives me kind of a drop dead line. And I've drawn myself a line to reference to bring in my point tool. And very carefully, we're going to make a groove. There we go. Now we're going to do the same thing on the top edge. Edge of the tool rest also gives us a line, a uh, do not cross line, a line of no return here. And make sure that that is clear, that is clear. Okay, so that has defi defined the top and bottom edges of our texturing. And what we're going to do now is bring in the pyrography pen. This is not a very high quality pyrography pen. Uh, I am planning to upgrade, but it'll get the job done. So what I need here... I don't have enough plugs. Just, we got to let this warm up. And what we're going to do is uh, crank that all the way. This sucker gets hot. That's why one of the reasons I don't like this very much is because it gets hot. Morning, Scott. Once again, I am streaming on three other platforms at the moment. I am on the tube of you. Hey, Doug, uh, the, the, the back is holding out. Good to see you. Um, how's the audio? Gl uh, thanks for being here. Appreciate seeing you. Um, so I'm on the tube of you. I'm on the book of face and I am uh, also streaming, I believe, on uh, Insta, uh, I hope. So we're just going to bring some uh, texture in here with fire. This, this has got to get hotter. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Doug. Awesome. Appreciate it. And uh, I guess we can, as we're waiting for it to really heat up, we can start working on the groove because we want to get that darkened too. So this is going to be, well, this thing is really slow. There are far superior um, pyrography pens to this. This is just uh, the one I picked up to see if I liked pyrography but made it to improving the uh, pen I've got yet. But we definitely want it a little hotter. We want to get a good scorch in there. I need to see smoke coming off of it. I want to get some deep stippled texture here. 
So this thing's got to get hot enough to give me that result. And unfortunately, because this is such a, a low quality pyrography pen, it's going to heat up my fingers. It, it's not very good uh, thermal protection for the user. There we go. We seem to be getting somewhere here. So we will get our little uh, our little texture on. I'm going to lock my spindle. There we go. Now we're getting some smoke. Now we're now we're getting where we need to be. And I'm just putting this on here to just give it a little something different. Now, this is red oak. This is not going to be very um, liquid resistant. Red oak is very, very porous, extremely porous. Um, come on, get in there. So my intent with this is this would make a very good shave mug because the soap will deal with the porousness. A, a cake of shaving soap will will uh, uh, block the bottom. You don't use excessive amounts of water, so you don't really have to worry about leakiness. I will seal this with pure tongue oil, but that's not going to make it waterproof. Not in a long, not by a long shot. That's really starting to get that temperature up, which is good. No real pattern here. Just want to kind of give it a little bit of a, an effect. Just for fun, just to kind of change things up a little. But I can tell you what, this sucker is getting warm. It's one of the reasons I need to upgrade my pyrography pen. It's just so that I can hold it. Kind of looks a little bit like fish scales. But I did spare you guys all the sanding um, involved in cleaning up the carving. There's still some sanding to do, but the the bulk of the of the Heavy lifting is done. There we go. Now this is definitely not a place for a wire burn. Using a wire to burn is um, dangerous anyway, but sticking a wire in this groove next to this handle is not smart. So I will use the pyrography pen tip and get that groove darkened up. I prefer to use a wood chip and you do a friction burn that way. Uh, but even a wood chip wouldn't be really smart with this handle flip spinning around. And you've got to get your RPMs up fairly high, at least in the eight or 900 range in order to generate enough heat. And uh, again, getting your fingers that close with a wood chip or getting a wire that close is just not smart. It's guaranteed way to have a bad day.
Rangers pitch. I'm unsure what that is, Doug. I don't know that. Uh, hang on a second. Let me see. This window's Brewers pitch would probably. I'm, I'm assuming you said it would probably leave a mark, but I'm not sure what Brewers pitch is. Interesting. Now I have something to Google. Woohoo! Okay. Well, this is definitely heated up enough that it's moving faster. Still getting it a little slide on it, though. I don't want it to do that. I don't have a tip. I, I, I think a ball-shaped tip would probably be a little more effective for this specific application, but I don't have one. But I do like the way this looks. And red oak smells good when it's hot, when it's burning. Oh, getting... Brewer's pitch will make it watertight. For Oh, okay. I, ne I didn't know about that. I'll have to look that up. I've never heard of it. I have been, uh, now the coffee mugs that I've turned, well, except the one with the, the cracked bottom. The other one, I uh, did a very thorough soaking with pure tongue oil. And then uh, over the top with Brad's workbench. Uh, tongue honey, which is pure tongue oil, beeswax, and carnauba wax. And that will give it a very good uh, water-resistant finish. It'll hold coffee. It'll hold water. Um, but I don't generally claim any uh, natural finish as being waterproof um, because eventually water does start to work its way into the material. But I will have to look up Brewer's Pitch. That might be another food safe solution. The other way to do it is, of course, epoxy. And I'm just not a big fan of putting more plastic than necessary in our foods. It's just my thing. And pure tongue oil has been used for a long, long time for sealing food vessels. I like this texture. I like what this is doing. About about another week and I'll be able to drink out of the first uh multi-axis mug I made. That will become my daily coffee mug. Yeah, re I mean, resin resin has great uses. It really does. And, you know, for the people who are really successful and, and make a living doing resin, good. I am just not real. I mean, we get exposed to enough plastic. Studies are coming out telling us that the plastics in our water bottles and the plastics in our milk jugs and the plastics in our food packaging are all harming us. So, 
And in addition, when I pick up a wooden cup, I want it to feel like wood, not plastic. I'm weird that way. It's the same with pens. If I'm using a, a turned wooden pen, I want it to feel like wood. Okay, I really... I'm actually quite pleased with the texture I am getting from this little pen tip. It really does look very scale-like, kind of like fish scales. And that's fun. That is a kind of a fun texture to have, especially for a shaving mug. So it's going to be around water. So it's kind of a fun texture to put on it. But again, this being red oak, I don't know. <laughs> it take a lot of pitch to seal this sucker up. <laughs> this is one of those cases where epoxy would be your only, your only choice, most likely. Uh, red oak is very porous. And this, is, this piece is no exception. In, in fact, it has a little spalt, which makes it even more... Uh, Potentially leaky. Again, no real pattern here. I'm just kind of. This sucker's getting really hot. Trying to be fairly random. And I do have a time limit with this little pen. It does get too hot to handle. Then I'm going to have to unplug it and take it over and lay it across my other lathe bed so that it's not touching anything that could light on fire, including my Mastiff, who's curious and sticks her nose places it doesn't belong. But I think once I get this all burned, um, I think I'm really going to like having this little pattern on it. I think it's going to look really cool. And I might even use one of the embellishing tricks that uh, uh, Mr. Cap showed us uh, the other night at the Worldwide Wood Turners meeting and uh, get a little bit of color into the burn. This will give me a good excuse to practice what I learned during the demonstration. For those of you who don't know, Worldwide Wood Turners is a free wood turning club. We meet via Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central. And we have demonstrations every week, free of charge. Come on, hold still. Whew, this sucker's getting warm. Yeah, I, I, use, um, I use hut products, Doug. Um, I have I have had uh, some spectacular failures with CA, both CA gluing the pen on and CA finish, um, gluing the pen to the tube and CA finish. Um, but uh, I really like the Hut Perfect Pen Polish System, which is a wax and shellac base, and then I usually go over the top of it with Hut Crystal Coat, which is microcrystalline wax and shellac and uh, I carry these in my I use them daily in my shop and it's a, it's a good finish it holds up real well 
but it also offers the opportunity for patina to develop, um, which is something that, to me I think is, is desirable in a handmade wooden pen, is that it starts to develop some of the characteristics of the hand that held it. And, you know, everybody has their methods. Everybody likes to do things different. I've tried CA. I just, I just it's not the result I, I prefer. That's, you know, we all have our preferences. If somebody orders a pen and wants it finished with CA, uh, I, I'll do it. Um, and in some cases, you don't have a lot of choice but to use CA. Uh, some of the segmented blanks that I've been uh, using are heavily impregnated with cyanoacrylate. It's the only way to keep them together. All right. Now is where this little pen is starting to show how much I need an upgrade. It's actually cooling off. And I did not turn it down. It may have an overheat protection in it. Yeah, it's definitely not burning the same as it just was. Ah, the porn bots are at it over on TikTok. That's always exciting. Hello, Munchie. That's the Mastiff. She doesn't like it when I'm broadcasting with multiple camera angles because um, my setup that holds my laptop blocks her from coming in. That's cool. That's going to get a light once over with sandpaper. Then we're going to hit it with some shellac. And then we're going to see if we can't get some color squeezed in there. Ah, now it's getting too hot. All right, I'm about to do something you folks will never see me do however the lathe is not turning that is getting too hot to handle you will never ever ever see me holding a uh, wearing a glove at the lathe you don't see me do this but the lathe is not turning and this sucker is getting too hot to hold Definitely need an upgrade. This is going to be cool, though. just about halfway through. It's going faster than I thought it would.
That puppy's really warming up. good well the fees the feed my monitoring of the feed froze on Facebook but I think the feed's still going so if you're commenting on Facebook I apologize I can't see it I'm testing the limits of my my streaming uh, software Pipe foam. I don't have any, but yeah, you're right. That would be a great uh, solution. Well, the real solution is to get a better pyrography pen. <laughs> this was the $30 on Amazon just because I wanted to see if I was, uh, if I enjoyed the uh, technique or not. I do. I don't do it enough, um, but I think it's something that I'm probably going to break out more. So uh, the other reason, this is really low. Uh, this is only a 60 watt pen. Um, and uh, I've seen some really nice, uh, much higher power pyrography pens that are much faster uh, just, just because it gets hotter and much, uh, much more protection. This is really not probably intended for this uh, long length of use. But sometimes you got to get what you can afford and then go from there. We're almost there. We're just 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 at the halfway mark. And we're going to give it a quick once over with 180 grit and seal that. And then while the, uh, while the shellac is drying, we'll hollow. I'll lock my spindle here. Good old Arthur's kicking in. Hello, Isaac. Is it? Yeah, I figured it was still going on Facebook. I just my monitor froze, so I can't see the chat if there is any comments on on the book face. But I'm I'm really pushing all of my setup right now because I'm streaming on the tube of you, the book face, the gram of Insta, and using my phone to stream on TikTok. So work, and if I could remember my Twitch login, I'd be streaming on Twitch. Oof. That's hot.
it's starting to cool down again. This little pen, probably not really built for this. <clears throat> okay, I do see a chat on the book face. Uh, Sue, I am making a shaving mug, and right now what I'm doing is pyrography. I am giving it some texture on the band where the handle is which is carved, not turned, because there's a handle there. And when it's spinning around at 1,000 RPM, I can't stick a tool in there. So this band is a, just a tiny bit wider than the uh, handle um, and is not perfect because it's carved rather than turned, so it doesn't blend exactly perfect. So... I am texturing it to test out a technique and also kind of disguise the fact that although it looks pretty good, it's not continuous. The curve is a little bit off because it is hand carved. But I'm getting better at that carving part, which is actually something I started practicing to apply to putting feet on the bottom of bowls because it looks cool. And then I got an idea from a turner, another turner here in North Carolina named Andrew McCarn. He's on TikTok. Um, and he's been putting handles on the sides of bowls. And I liked the look. So I might start playing with that, too, just because it looks cool. So carving definitely becomes important. Getting, getting that... Uh, Getting, getting proficient at it is important if you're going to start adding those kind of features. Ah, this thing is cooling off. I hope I'm not burning it out. Actually, I hope I do burn it out. Then I have an excuse to get a new one. <laughs> All right. So the I can't see the stream. The, the video is frozen, but the comments aren't on Facebook. That's um, different. Watai Wood Turning, same as here, Neil. Uh, same on Instagram. If somebody wouldn't mind going over and checking the gram of Insta to see if it's actually streaming, I'd appreciate that. I have absolutely no way to monitor that. Uh, hang on a second. Let me grab some pliers. Not even with the glove am I going to grab that, but this thing is warping. I might, hopefully I kill this little sucker. Yeah, Andrew's, Andrew's, uh, Andrew hasn't been turning, he's only started turning in 2019. He's a very, very talented artist. And he's gotten in with the uh, furniture one of the furniture markets in uh, high point brilliant at marketing he's he sells all his bowls at his storefront in high point kind of jealous but he his work is fabulous Also, wish I had a lathe big enough to turn monster bowls like he does. I got a friend down in uh, uh, just over the border in South Carolina who uh, turns big bowls. And in fact, he has a robust American beauty that I can uh, go steal from him anytime I like. Um, but he got into 100% kitless bespoke pens and he hasn't turned but like three or four bowls since he made, since he started making bespoke pens. Nobody wants bowls anymore. They want pens. His pens are amazing. Z Zodiac pens, I think is, is the name of his uh, pen business. But uh, Logs to Treasures is his uh, bowl-making endeavor, and uh, he makes some fantastic bowls. Munchies. 
she telling the world she's big and scary? Nobody believes you. They think you're big and goofy. They don't believe you, Boop. Almost there. We're two-thirds of the way around the, the little mug. And I have a plan for the for the light spots, for the high spots. This place is, this thing is playing with its heat. Hey, Van. Hey, I'm also on, uh, if you, you know the, the links and the thingies, I'm on the tube of you. I'm on the face place right now. And I think I'm on the gram of Insta. I should, I'm supposed to be on the gram of Insta. Whether it's working or not is a different thing because the way it functions when you're streaming from a streaming service is different than anything else, any other platform. Oh, this is starting to get hot through the glove. Whew. <laughs> Not seeing me on Insta. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. So something didn't connect there. That's something I'll have to mess with. I'm certainly not going to mess with it right now. We're almost we're almost all the way around this puppy, and we can hollow it. So I have to repeat my game plan to myself, or I'll forget my game plan. We're going to sand it lightly at 180. Going to seal the the uh, textured band with shellac, and while that shellac is curing up, we're going to hollow it. That is my plan, and I'm going to stick to it. But we're getting a cool, I'm, I'm really liking this texturing effect that I'm getting here quite a bit. It's just different enough. And I was going to use the ball shaped um, burr on the Dremel. But I decided I wanted to test the burning and... Uh, uh, coloration um, that we saw in the demo on Wednesday night. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it only in this little skinny section, though, not, not uh, on a big hollow form yet. But that gave me some ideas. And I happen to have this very, very dry, very aged red oak kicking around. So I decided why not start chopping it up because it's a good porous wood that should effectively uh, show that technique. So expect to see some red oak hollow forms. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with burning and color. This stuff is very, very old, very dry. It's very, it's almost work hardened. It's probably been through so many seasons of warm, cold, warm, cold. It's really hard. I don't even remember where I got it. I just remember it was bone dry when I got it. I think I got it from Bob. I think I got it from my first mentor. I 
know, about four years ago, I turned a salad bowl out of it, or a fruit bowl, really. And dry as it was, last year, the bottom cracked. Okay, we're about three quarters of the way. Getting there, just about there. What if you, ah, my little feed is cutting off the, uh, cutting off half of your comments, Doug. Hang on a second. Let's see if I can move this and see what you're saying. Something about bourbon. Which I don't know if red oak would taste good on uh, if bourbon would taste good in red oak, um, or not. Oh, flame. Okay. Also, a potential solution, yes, is to is to char it. Yes, but I think the I think there's a specific reason they use white oak with bourbon barrels and wine barrels rather than red oak, and I think it's the porosity of the red oak. But, a ch you know, char might, I don't know. It's something to experiment with. I don't know that I'm going to experiment it with it on this mug, but that is something to experiment with. And, you know, there is a company selling, uh, n they're not turned, they're, they're uh, CNC cut, um, charred uh, bourbon glasses called the, the Whiskey Grail. And it's white oak, charred white oak. So it's a potential. I don't know if they put any kind of sealant in it after they charred or not. I'm losing my tip. Yes, flame, yeah, flame. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to make a test. I'm gonna have to make a test glass and uh, try that out and see. Now, see, now I got another project. I'll just add it to the list. So much to turn, so little time. I really do like, though, you've got some really cool figure in this piece of uh, red oak. And there is some very small spalt lines in it. Not very expressive. I think a different piece of this chunk that I've already turned and have sold or given away was pretty heavily spalted. I think it was this chunk. And I turned all the spalted side, and I'm still working through the... <laughs> through the uh, the unspalted side of the of this piece of red oak. Oh yeah, we're just about there. Come on. This little pen is just about at it. It keeps heating up and cooling off and heating up and cooling off. The, the, the uh, thermostat is not consistent. But it's hot enough that I need a glove to protect my hand. And the glove's getting hot. So next time I do any kind of burn... Uh, until I get a better pyrography pen, we'll just use the torch. Because it's fun. Love to play with fire. I do, by the way, 
have a fire extinguisher right there within reach. If you are going to do pyrography, use a torch. If you use any kind of oil finishes and you have waste rags or cloths or paper towels from those, you really, 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 really should have a fire extinguisher in your shop. And in fact, I have two, but one needs to be recharged just because of age. I've got to take it to the place and have it uh, have them replace all the seals and recharge it. Come on. You're almost done, little pen. Uh, no, see, Sue. Hi, Sue. Um, no, I am not going to burn the handle. Um, in fact, I'm going to take my kiridashi and carve a little uh, loop around the handle like I've got on the, uh, 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 carve a little ring around the base of the handle like I've got going around the sides. Um, but no, I don't want to burn the handle. I might burn the end of the handle. I might, yeah, I'm going to burn the end of the handle because that'll blend it in. And that's actually. And the pyrography pen has given up the ghost. Okay. Well, I guess that's that. Darn it. Good thing this isn't a project I was counting on selling. Darn pen broke. Get this hot thing out of the sawdust. Get this over here where it can cool down safely. Woo. Boy, is this hot. All right. Let that cool. That's, I guess we're done with the pyrography pen. So we'll get two aspects of this little, uh, of this technique. So what I was just saying was around the handle here. Uh, my plan was to bring in my little kiridashi and just carefully encircle the base of the handle. There we go. Just like that. Actually, I have a better way to do that because that's wandering a little. But I have these wonderful little Japanese needle rasps. These things are awesome. Thank you. 
Again, this project is mostly just a play piece to practice techniques. So I'm not disappointed that my pyrography pen died. I'm not surprised either. There we go. So we defined that a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Doug. New tool. New tool. <laughs> Okay, so, we're, so we'll finish the burn here since we're not going to be able to texture it, but I still want to play with the burning technique. Um, we're going to go with a little benzene torch. This is a little uh, chef's torch. And it has a very small um, flame. So we'll get a good scorch in the rest of this little area here. Again, so that we can get the effect that we're looking for. As was said uh, at the demonstration during the demonstration Wednesday night, this is probably the most fun ebonization technique. Who wants to use chemicals when you can use fire? But I was also planning to do this to darken up the little light spots in our texture. So this will give me a chance to look at the difference that the uh, colorization uh, has on differently um, produced burns. Make sure we get into that soft grain really well. And grab the brush. We'll come in here. Pull out that soft grain. Okay. Now we're going to hit it with some 180 grit. Feels pretty good. All right, now we're going to seal this band with some shellac. That 
has cooled off enough that I don't need to worry about that. And we're going to go with a two pound cut. <laughs> yeah the torch definitely got a lot more dark so this is a two pound cut of de-waxed shellac from old world shellac and everclear so technically this is food safe Although, why you would want to drink shellac is beyond me. But you could. After we hollow this, we're going to play with color. So I'll end up sanding all of this away, taping it. Well, I'm going to tape it before I do the color because I don't want the color to bleed out here. I just want it in this band. I'll let that start to dry. And I could, if I got the torch near, next to that now, that alcohol would flash right off. That's 150 or 170 proof. Um, uh, ever clear. <laughs> so that will flash immediately if I hit it with the torch, but we're not going to do that. All right. We're going to get the tail stock out of the way. We're going to uh, give a little bit of a different view for those on the YouTube and Facebook platforms. Um, can I get you in where you can have a better angle of the hollowing? If you just give me a second, we'll switch to that view. There we go. Maybe. There we go. All right. Face shield on. And we are going to use a 5 8 inch bowl gouge just because we're going to use a drill and pull method. Come in at about 45 degrees. Hang on a second. Take my pedometer off. Come in with the tool at about 45 degrees. Just push it, drive it straight in. And then I really consider this drill and push method because I push my right hand out, which draws the, uh, draws the blade back. And hollows, this is end grain. And I find for a piece like this, this ends up being faster than taking the time to uh, set up a uh, Forstner bit on the Jacobs truck. By the time I go through all that, I'm already halfway done hollowing. Ah. And we are getting to the point 
I'm getting too far off of the tool rest. But we have a solution for that, and we will switch gouges. This is really porous. Uh, you guys probably can't quite see down in there, but wow. <coughs> Although I'm sure there is a way to seal red oak, this piece of red oak isn't going to seal. <laughs> this piece is very porous. Like, holy cow. I could probably put the uh, air compressor up, blow air into it, and feel it coming out the backside. Okay, so what we're doing is we've got a box rest. We're going to switch to the 3 8 inch spindle gouge. And this gives us 100% support deep into the piece. Which maintains... leverage by moving the fulcrum into the piece closer to the work. This particular box rest is from Bestwood Tools. And it is modular. The tool post can be swapped out for other rests. But that has a permanent home on that tool post. I use this thing frequently. We don't like that little spot right there as we're coming around that corner. this fairly thick it has to be three inches wide consistently all the way down so we're going to take it out a little bit further um, and the reason for that is because a soap cake for shaving soap is three inches wide Ah, come on. That is strictly due to me. I am moving too rapidly. I need to be a little bit slower and more deliberate in there. in with my square end scraper here.
There we go. Some nice shavings coming off that scraper. That's a good clean side. Should be about... We are pushing it. We are pushing it. That's going to be tight. I'm going to have to widen that out a little bit more. Try to get the direction of the walls consistent. My narrow point is where the handle is. That's just a shape preference. But that's got to be at least three inches wide. Feels like that might be pretty good. All right, we can bring that in a little bit more. Go back to the spindle gouge which I'm going to touch up real quick. A little trick Mark Soleil taught me for hollowing is steepen the angle on this 3 8 inch spindle gouge. is a tiny bit high. Now it's too low. Split the difference. There we go. And we're just doing the drill and pull technique. And obviously my leverage is pretty good. And this oak is really hard. So Leona Fay was asking me when I was showing this technique if uh, back hollowing would be faster and permit less vibration. And my honest answer is I'm terrified of back hollowing. Back hollowing. I have not tried it <coughs> because it is the antithesis of everything we're taught to do with the couch. <laughs> And it absolutely terrifies me. But you see uh, Richard Raffin and Tomislav. Uh, I can never remember Tomislav's last name, but you see them do it all the time. Which is impressive because it's a terrifying technique. It's, a, it, it's counterintuitive. Coming clean on the sides. I'm impressed. If I do say so myself, we are exactly three inches across inside. As long as I keep these sides straight, I think we're going to be safe. bit. 
make sure it's clear. When you're adjusting your tool rest, first of all, safest is to stop the lathe. And then the second thing you need to do is move it by hand. Make sure that you're clearing everything. Turn the piece by hand and confirm that you are clear. That seems obvious. But every time I forget, I'm reminded why we're supposed to do it that way. to switch to my uh, crown's half inch scraper Let's get down to the rest of the bottom of that uh, let's do go back down the walls again I'm still very surprised I mean I know I just sharpened the scraper but the fact that this uh, red oak is scraping as cleanly as it is is a little bit surprising to me especially with how porous this stuff is. This is an exceptionally porous piece of red oak. quarters of an inch to go depth wise we're gonna come in with the crown half inch start working our depth the square end scraper. Bring our sides out so we can get that tool rest a little bit closer to the bottom. Considering some of the things that this lathe has done for me, I'm okay with that. I have put this sucker through its paces. Okay, it's time for a real depth check. Hello, Katie. All 
right. Ooh, and we are about uh, more than a quarter inch left to take out. We're just about where we need to be. Uh, let's double check the width here. Just over three inches. As long as I can shoot my box scraper straight down the side and make sure that that is as close to parallel to the lathe bed as possible, I should be okay. That's why I made this scraper. I turned it a little bit so that I have that uh, negative rake edge, but as I run it down a vessel, I'm not dragging all of this along. I find it lets me get a little bit of a, a more square or straight cut down a wall like this. I can maintain a little bit more consistency, um, especially in a smaller box. The curve of the box will actually touch the top edge and uh, push it away on a smaller piece. This one's not quite big enough that it would necessarily matter. But I figured by kicking that out about, I don't think it's about seven degrees, I'd help prevent some of that creep. That's pretty, that's really good actually, that's nice. I think we're, I think we're gonna call that three inches. And we can get back in there with the crown scraper and finish the bottom. It should be about three passes. We're just about there. Drop the handle a little, get underneath that little nub. So you pick the handle up, get under the nub, drop the handle, and that brings this shaving tip up, removes the nub. And that is probably to depth. Let's see. That's about where I want it. One more pass. One more pass. I'm going to raise the two of us just a tiny bit. So really make sure we get up underneath that nub. There we go. Nice, nice. Back to the box scraper here, the square end scraper. Bring that little corner out. I'm gonna move the tool rest outward. So I can get that corner in the bottom. We are there. Ooh, spoke too soon. We've got a little ridge right down at the bottom here.
There we go. Got her. Still got that little bump. Uh, one more, one more little scrapey do. This is almost bad as the nubbity nubs. You gotta watch out for those nubbity nubs. There we go. That got it. That got it. All right. <clears throat> I need to repurpose that. I'd never even use that tool. I need to make it something else. All I do with that tool is knock it off of my magnet. <sighs> okay. So obviously there's lots of sanding and stuff to do, but the whole point of this stage is we're gonna play with color now. So let me grab a pair of gloves and my embellishing wax. <coughs> Hey, hello, uh, Sean. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm streaming on uh, multiple other platforms. Young Army, Active Army. Hey, Leona, Active Army uh, youngster on TikTok. Okay, so I've got metallic luster uh, embellishing wax. This is brilliant turquoise. Um, get this at Hobby Lobby. It's very inexpensive um and when this stuff sets it's done it sets you're done with it so you got to work with it fairly uh quickly where's my there it is but it is inexpensive and it actually looks really good We're just going to mask this area off so that we don't get any bleed over. And we're going to mask down here. Obviously, we have plenty of sanding to do, but that's boring to do live for you and me because especially when I'm on the platforms I'm on I can't listen to music while I'm doing it all right so this is uh, my my experiment with the technique that we were taught by uh, uh, Kurt or Kirk Cap, I, I, I wrote his name down. I'm so bad with names, but Mr. Cap on Wednesday night at the Worldwide Woodturners uh, meeting, and uh, it's really cool. And I want this is the first time I've used this. I wanted to try this both on the just regular burn, but also on the textured burn. And I wanted to see how it would work. Now, my experience with this particular wax is that I'm going to hit this with uh, 240 grit sandpaper, and that'll take the high spots down. That's just the way this wax works. 
uh, the materials that he was demonstrating the other day um, were not quite I, I don't think they set as quickly as this stuff does for whatever reason this stuff sets instantly I probably could thin it with some mineral spirits or mineral oil uh, like he was doing with the brands he was using but you also do want to wear gloves with this because this will get into your pores and then you'll be shiny for the next two days. But it's inexpensive. That's what I like about it. It's not expensive at all. So first we'll try a paper towel, see how that works. But I think it's probably too late and we have to sand. And I am correct. That stuff set up that quickly. It's not coming off. So we're going to sand at 240. <sighs> See, my gloves are sticking on because I didn't snap them when I put them on. Broke the law. <laughs> hey, Sean, how are you? Good to see you. All right. Yeah, that's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. How's deployment prep going? Wetting with water. On the towel? That's a good idea. We will try water. I don't know if it'll work or not, though. This stuff is pretty... Oh, week has been doing pretty good. This brand is called um, Deco Art, Leona. And I get this at Hobby Lobby. But uh, it, it's a wax metallic finish. I think it's available pretty much everywhere. It's got... French and Spanish, or at least if it's available in Canada, I guess, in Mexico. Mm, well, hey, water's working, Doug. Thank you. Good, good suggestion. That's good to know. So the goal is just to leave the, well, we've got that that wide open grain, that, that red oak wide open grain down in there. But the goal is just to leave the wax in the low spots. So you can see these stripes, that's that red oak grain. Yeah. <laughs> Deployment prep sucks. I'm sure. How many, how many connects have, have you reloaded there, uh, Ashan? How many times have you re unloaded and reloaded the same Connex? Yeah, I think it's man law, Sue, that you have to snap your gloves when you put them on. When you don't, you always have problems. And Doug, you were saying a wet towel. Um, if I kept towels in the shop, I'd try it. I, uh, I do not use cloth. Uh, rags due to especially around the lathe for safety reasons so I don't have any um, now that's a lie I do have some microfiber that I use to cl clean my camera equipment but I don't use uh, okay so wet that one uh, let me try something I don't use uh, I don't use cloth around the lathe um, and that goes back to my Navy training Spinning, spinning equipment and any kind of fabric is a disaster. Oh, you meant paper towel. Okay, yeah. Yeah, paper towel. But what I'm wondering is if I have a wet finger. That's water-soluble. 
interesting. I learned something today, something else today. Ooh. I wouldn't think a wax would react that way to water. Doesn't say anything. Huh. So we got to find a balance of brushing it away lightly enough. Because I'll tell you, when this stuff sets, the, the only way to get it off is to sand it. But apparently, now I'll try soaking it. Let's get it down in there. Really want to get it down in those deep grooves. Those are, <laughs> this red oak is really porous. Now, okay, so this is not as expressive as the demo was the other night um, because this is end grain, so we only get one direction. Uh, so there's another lesson learned. Turn this, do something like this, cross grain, and you'll get more, more emphasis. That's cool, though. Look at that. That is cool. I like this part better. Let me see. Let me get you guys above that. This, I think, is far more striking up up here than in the dots, mainly because the grain, the thickness of the grain is, is it's just, it, it's there. I mean, you can't do anything about it. It's red oak. This looks cool, but this look, this is better to me. Interesting. Interesting. Oh my goodness, you ooh. That would be terrifying. Yeah, Ashan, I was just going for some kind of a kind of a scale-like texture. Absolutely. That's what I was going for. That would be terrifying getting your, your uh, sleeve caught. Again, Navy training, they showed us videos. They, 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 they terrified us. Uh, I'm just going to give this a little heat and kind of dry that out, that water. That's dry. But they showed us very graphically explicit videos of what happened when you got fabric or equipment, uh, fabric or clothing, gloves or clothing caught in moving equipment. And that was, that was terrifying. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Because we are limited for time, and there's definitely lots of sanding to do on the inside, I do not want to make you sit through that. I'm going to hit this... Uh, with 240 and then we're going to hit it with uh, the outside with a coat of tongue oil that's pure tongue oil uh, not polymerized tongue oil just so that we can see what it looks like and hang on let me try to clean this away so as far as experiments go, I'm very happy with the results. I am seeing a lot of interesting use for this technique with the, with the, the wax. I'm seeing a lot of use with it. And, of course, fire. Always a, always a, a great day when you have the opportunity to play with fire, as far as I'm concerned. But... That's another thing that I, I have been meaning to do. I saw a very, very beautiful hollow form um, <coughs> made of cherry and burned with a torch severely.
Yeah, I don't wear rings. You notice I took my pedometer off. Um, when I have spinning equipment, you're not going to see any encumbrances from, from three-quarter length down. It's not safe. And if I'm doing something where it's necessary to protect my fingers with gloves, I will only wear nitrile because that will tear. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to deglove my fingers. See, red oak is such a, that's sanding up so smooth and pretty, right? True, yeah, yeah, this is, and this is not, I mean, this is definitely not expensive. This is a, this is, I, I like it. I think it produces a really good effect. This is the gold rush. I have silver and I have a, uh, they have a um, rose gold. And I really like the coloration and the effect of it. I think it's really beautiful. But it's definitely not the high end stuff that you can only get at certain stores. All right, we're just about where we want to be before I put oil on here. And I finally killed that that little uh I finally killed that little pyrography pen. Thank goodness. Now I have a now I have a good reason to replace it with a better unit. So yeah, I like that. I like this. And I can see where he was saying that you want to sometimes put two or three, uh, two or three coats of, um, words are hard, two or three coats of shellac on there before you really get in there I, I see that all right pure tongue oil excuse me while I knock everything in my cupboard cupboard over I keep my pure tongue oil in a stop-loss bag that keeps the air away from it and prevents polymerization Let's see what the color's going to look like. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that lovely color of that red oak. That's cool. Look at that. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, darn. I have to replace my pyrography pen. Oh. Shucks. They have a really nice one at Klingsport, too. Really nice one. I'm forcing the air out of my stop loss bag. But look at the color, look at the richness of that red oak. Might not make a good coffee cup, but it is pretty.
It is pretty. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, obviously I've got lots of sanding to do in here. Um, and then I will thoroughly soak it with tongue oil, set it aside for a couple of days before I give it a final coat of Brad's Workbench Tongue Honey, um, which is pure tongue oil, beeswax, and carnauba wax. And then what you can't really see, you can see a little of it. Here's some spalting here. Here's a little bit of spalting here. However, I've actually got a, an area in here that's actually punky. Um, like severely punky right here. I'm surprised it held together. I could probably, if I pulled a little, I could probably pull my hand right through the side, pull my finger right through the side of that. So this obviously was never a good candidate for uh, um, an actual drinking vessel. Um, but I am going to look into Brewer's Pitch. That's an interesting, I've never heard of it, so I'm going to check it out. That might be something that I add to my food safe finishing arsenal. It does look a little, yeah, and probably, you know what, if I'd really rubbed in uh, the silver or one of the, or the gold, that would look a lot like, like hammered metal. And I was just going for just something different, just, just to give it a, a, a funky feel, you know. Um, so definitely something I'll play with some more uh, once I get a, uh, new pyrography pen um, but I really like this too and I could see where cross grain or three quarter grain where this would be a really really stunning effect think think about that coming at an angle if I had that that uh, piece altered uh, you know angled a little just at three quarter that would be pretty cool so yeah little test Brewer's Pitch, Ronald Can. Thank you, Leona. Um, I'll, I, yeah, I'm going to have to check out Brewer's Pitch. i got to look into that. That's something I've never heard of before, so I appreciate that, Doug. Um, any questions before we wrap it up? Boy, that is cool. That really is cool. This is something I'm going to play with some more, this specific texture right here. That is cool. I really like how that looks. It's a shame the pen died before we made it all the way around. That that's pretty that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Now another reason now this band here again because I have this handle, right? The band is here to disguise any errors I made hand carving this section right here. So as I'm hand carving right here, right? It's it's not impossible, but it's very difficult to get it per perfectly as though I cut it continuously with a tool. Um, so aside from playing with this coloration technique, I wanted to f experiment with just disguising it, just hiding it uh, or distracting from it. So, yeah. Um, and I will say after I sand the inside, um, what I will do is I have a jam chuck. Um, and actually I can, well, I don't want to, I don't want to take it off the chuck. Um, but what I do is I, I take a piece of shelf liner and I, and I, I, I do have cold jaws and cold jaws is another way to do this. But what I generally do is as I take a shelf liner, piece of shelf liner and do a friction jam and this would be in the chuck and the tail center will be in the center that's still on the bottom and then I'll just very uh, gently cut away the tenon and make sure that I am slightly concave on the bottom and then the little last little nub I usually just carve out with my Kiridashi. Um, Townsend's for the pitch. Townsend's, Townsend's, Townsend's. Doug, I know who you're talking about but I'm drawing a I'll, I'll find it I'll find it or message me um, on the face place or the insta who's it um, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it because I think it's a cool uh, I, I think it's a cool I didn't know it was out there so I, I definitely need to investigate that so I will turn away the bottom I'll have a slightly concave base again this one's just going to end up as my replacement shave mug this is more of an experiment really to get into into this did it get into the texture and get into the color so 
that's where we're at. Um, and uh, here, let's show let's show the tiki takis. Get them up close here. Maybe. Where's the camera aiming? There we go. So there's what the texturing with the coloration looks like. It turned out really cool. I'm. This is something you're going to see a lot more of. I'm going to play with that a lot. I like it. I just it's just something different. It's something new. Something I don't usually do, but it looks really neat. So yeah. All righty. That's it, folks. Thanks for joining me. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll try to do a little bit of more live action on the multiple platforms next week. And hopefully I can work out some more of the kinks because there are definitely some kinks. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, but thank you very much for joining me. If you're on the Tiki Talkie, you click all the things and go on and to the things and, and like and follow and, and subscribe to all the things. I'd appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. And for the YouTube and the Facebook, thank you very much for joining me. Really appreciate it. The image froze on Facebook, but it looks like uh, the uh, video continued even though I can't see the playback. So appreciate you being there, and um, we'll do this again next week.